Today our topic is regular expressions. Today I will teach you most of the basic regular expressions. So uh, first of all we should discuss what regular expressions actually are. Um, it is a language to describe uh, patterns of text. And um, the reason why this language is so popular is because many tasks involve searching and replacing patterns in huge uh, text files. So imagine you're a data scientist, you get Excel files from a collaborator and your task is to import this from a database. There's a lot of cleaning steps required where you have to select certain aspects of the input files and then copy them into the database. And so it turns out finding certain text patterns in a text file is really cumbersome in classical Python or in classical computer uh, languages. Regular expressions are much, much more powerful to do these tasks. The lecture today will be a little bit different to what I've given before. We will do live coding. We will interactively develop some problems um, and uh, let's see how it goes. Essentially, the way this is built up is that on my left I have some uh, slides and then on the right I have a terminal where I can run the code. Or the really, really, really useful way of using regular expressions is actually in your editor. Many more advanced editors have a regular expression uh, engine built in and you can use that engine to search and replace text. Simple search and replace is available from any text editor, but if you use a good editor, uh, for instance, I use Vim, but um, you can use your favorite editor. So for instance, if you use Sublime Editor and you go here in find and then replace, down here you have some options and you can see here on the very left, you can switch on uh, this dot star button. If you switch this on, then you have the regular expression engine switched on and you can use the regular expression language to do a search and replay. Many programming editors have this available. But I just want to demonstrate you as a motivational example why regular expression is so much more powerful than the simple search and replace. This is a code example here where I do some stencil calculations. Uh, this is uh, my daily bread and butter that I have to do some uh, calculations like this and it involves a lot of indices. And so I sit down and kind of work out I think about what these indices should look like and then I code them up here. Now, stupidly, I've done a mistake in this code. Namely, I mixed up the uh, J and I uh, indices. And this is just 20 lines, but it could well be also 100 lines of code. What I would like to do is I want to actually replace all the J's and the I's in these uh, brackets here. And so what I can do now is I can start the regular expression engine in my Vim editor. So this is a little bit of a cryptic, but at the end of the lecture, you will understand what I'm doing. Percentage S starts the replacement of text. And then I have a backslash V to start the regular expression engine. And now I describe the text that I want to have uh, replaced. I want to have a, uh, the open brackets. This is the text that I'm looking for. Then I want to have some characters that I want to have replaced by up to a comma. Then I want to have a space. And you can see while I'm typing, it marks all the text that it's currently matching to. Okay, so then I want to have some more text that I would like to replace. And then finally, there's going to be a closing bracket. So this now describes the text that I would like to match. And now comes the part where I describe what I want to have it replaced it with. So now all this original text is gone. And what I type now is what it's going to be replaced with. So now I want to have the bracket again. And this time I want to have the, um, um, the indices uh, swapped. So everything that was now on this after the comma is now in front of the comma. Right? So this is something that would not be trivial to do with the standard editor, but it is possible to do with a regular expression. So just to show you this again, I can go back and forward. So you see the, um, the step it, uh, had, had swapped it. So just one command that is looked maybe a bit complicated, but you learn how it works soon. Let's start very uh, simple. Um, and so, of course, regular expressions is also available in Python. And so let's say we have a simple string up here with a lot of spam words. And so let's say we want to replace all the spam with a ham. So what do we do? We can start our regular expression engine. And for that, we need to import the regular expression module, which is called RE. Of course, the first thing that we could do is we could try to avoid regular expression um, totally. We could use, just use the standard Python features. It turns out every string in Python has a dot replace function. And then what you can pass in is the word that you want to have replaced and then the text that you want to have it replaced it with. So this is a perfectly fine start and that for that we also don't need the um, regular expression engine. And if you run this, you're running the substitution.py and you can see in the output text, all the spams have now been replaced by hams. 
So now we can do exactly the same, but using regular expressions. And the way we do that is that uh, instead I use the re.sub function. So sub uh, stands for substitute. So I do a regular expression substitution. And then I provide again the uh, word that I want to substitute, the word that I want to have it substituted with. And then as the last argument, I provide the string where I want to apply the substitution to. If I run this script again, as you can see, I get exactly the same output again. All the spans have been replaced uh, with hands. But now we can do some more fancy things. So now let's say, let's add some parts here. And let's add scan here. And let's say we also want to, want to replace words where we don't care about the second character in spam. So we also want to re replace scam. What you can do is we can tell the regular expression that instead of specifying the second character, we simply add a dot. And a dot in the regular expression language stands for any character. So dot is any character. This first item here matches any text that starts with S, then followed by any character, and then followed by an A and M. This should now match both scam and spam, for instance, but of course, um, all, also all variations. So let's try again. And indeed, cam, which is, was the last word, is now also replaced by ham. Regular expression is case sensitive. If I used a capital here, then you see the, this one after Viking is replaced, but of course all the other ones aren't replaced. So let's make things a little more challenging. So now I've made the text a little bit more complicated. Now we have all kinds of variations of spam down here. So we have some numbers and some special characters in here and so on. Often it would be nice to be more specific about which uh, spams you want to have replaced. So what we want to do is we want to specify exactly which character classes we want to target. We have special character classes for this. So dot stands for any character. Then we have backslash w and backslash w stands for any word character. Word character can be any small letter from A to Z. It can be any capital letter from A to Z or it can be any a number from zero to nine. If we place it backslash w in here instead of the dot, then we will target words that have in the second entry a word character and all the other ones we will not target. Now I need to um, have a little uh, break here because this unfortunately won't work. The problem is that um, if you have strings, the backslash indicates that there's a special character starting. Uh, and so typically we need to escape these characters. Uh, just to give you a simple example, if you want to have a string that contains the letters backslash n and you print it, then instead of seeing a backslash n, you actually see a new line because backslash n is a special character that represents a new line. Backslash n you might know, but there, there are some uh, more fancy special characters, for instance, the backslash b. It uh, deletes a character. It, in fact, it goes, it moves the cursor one to the left. For instance, if you have a and then backslash b, b, then what's going to happen is that um, you print out a, then you move the cursor back, and then you print out b. So the result is simply b. In regular expression, we don't want to have these special characters, but we really do want to have the backslash. And pass to the regular expression engine. So there's two options. One option is that you double escape the backslash. So you can write a backslash backslash n, but this becomes very cumbersome because there will be a lot of backslashes. We can add an r in front of the string definition. And that indicates that we're talking about a raw string, simply meaning that we, we want to read that string literally. So backslash remains a backslash. Here, in order for this to work robustly, I use a R in front of the string definition. In almost all regular expressions, the regular expression where you describe the pattern, you typically always want to have an R, indicating that you're talking about a raw string. So let's try it. So this now should replace any spams where the um, second uh, character is a word character. Actually, we should move it to the second one. So let's do that. Okay, let's try this again here. The sp7m has been replaced by ham because seven is a word character. And the sp%m has not been replaced because percentage is not a word character. Now we can be more specific about what we want to replace and what not. There's also a specifier for non-word characters, and that's the capital 
w. That's essentially everything that is not a little w. So if you try that again, now we should uh, see exactly the opposite to before. So sp7m is still there, but then the sp dollar ham has been replaced by, uh, by ham. The last very common character specification is a digit, and that's a backslash d. So it's a digit character. And then you also have the capitalized version that's a non-digit character. So all these you can uh, use in your regular expressions.